The Soybean School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Cruiser Max Vibrance, High Stick NT, and the Manitoba Pulse Girl. I'm Lindsay Smith with RealAgriculture.com. I'm here with Terry Buss just outside of Beaujolais, Manitoba. Not typically a big soybean uh, region, but certainly growing. Uh, you've had some calls from farmers on some defoliation, some insect feeding. Uh, tell me what uh, you're seeing in the field. Well, what we're seeing is, is essentially that defoliation for the very most part. Uh, there are a lot of insects that feed on soybean uh, leaves. Um, a number of defoliators are out there. Uh, the concern is uh, usually comes to the producer when they see defoliation often on the top of the canopy. Uh, frankly, the crop is worth a fair bit of money to us. It's a very successful crop for us. It's been very profitable. And so everybody's really keen to make sure that nothing's jeopardizing our soybeans. Now, there's a couple insects likely feeding on soybeans. Uh, any of particular note that farmers should be scouting for? Yeah, there's three in particular that we've noticed and two that I think are, are, are mostly responsible for what we're seeing. One of them is, is grasshoppers. We've had more grasshoppers in some parts of our region this year, mainly because we had good egg laying conditions last year, so we have a bigger hatch. We're not a consistent grasshopper area, but the weather's been right. We've had some dry years and they rev up, and so we've seen fun, some feeding from grasshoppers. They're pretty general in what they eat. Uh, the other, I think, big culprit that we're seeing is the green clover worm. Uh, we've had it for years. Years. We haven't really cared about it until we had soybeans. So the green clover worm is one that's out there. We've seen it. They have a very distinct feeding pattern. They tend to create shot holes in the leaves. And as they get to their later, later larval instars, they tend to feed on the top of the plants primarily. And so you get a shot holing effect on the top of the plants that visually is very alarming when you first look at it, when you come into the field. It looks like somebody's literally taken a shotgun to some of the field and punched holes in your leaves. Uh, the other one that we've seen, that we've had reports of, and that we've seen a bit of, a zebra caterpillar. I'm not really as concerned about that one, but we see it mixed into the into the group of insects that we see feeding on the soybeans. But frankly, the big thing with soybeans is what's our defoliation levels like? Regardless of which bug is doing it, we have to monitor defoliation levels. Okay, so Terry, let's look at uh, this crop here and give me a give me a sense of what we're seeing on one of these plants as far as the level. Now, I mean, the feeding is obvious. Yes. But at what point are we worried about yield damage? It, it, level our yield damage depends on the growth stage of the crop. Uh, people are often surprised that the foliation tolerance in soybeans is quite high. Uh, so when we first come in the field, this is often what we'll see. Um, and again, uh, we see a lot of feeding on the top. If we see feeding on leaf margins like this, where a leaf margin has basically been chomped out, that's often a grasshopper that's done something like that. But this shot holey stuff, where we see holes in the center of the leaf, you can see it there, a lot of holes punch through, that's often a green clover worm. And as I say, they tend to feed on the top leaves. And it can be quite an optical illusion. Our thresholds are based on whole plant defoliation though. So what I like to do when I'm assessing a plant is I like to actually pull the plant out, pull a few out as I'm scouting, so I can get a sense of whole plant defoliation. Because often what I find is the damage is worse on the top. And as we go down, we can take a look at what's feeding. Here's some grasshopper damage that's happened on a lower leaf. We've got more of the shot holing on the top, that's likely green clover worm. When we're assessing our plants in the field, as I say, there's varying thresholds depending on uh, plant growth stage. Before potting, before flowering, when we're still just growing green foliage in, in, the, in the earlier summer, we can have, the literature varies depending on who you read, but generally I use 35% whole plant defoliation as my measure. Once we move into flower and, and, and pod fill, early pod like this, that threshold, generally everyone agrees it moves down to about 20%. There are even finer points you can put on it than that based on the literature, depending on who you read, but uh, I'm going to stick with 20%. That's, uh, that's the threshold that we're using now as we move through flowering and pod fill. When we get to the point where we've got late pod fill and we're even moving into maturity, the threshold moves up to more like 35%. But even 20% is a lot of foliage feeding. Uh, a few holes isn't the issue. It's a lot of foliage feeding and it's a whole plant threshold. That's the thing we have to always emphasize. You may see a devastated leaf, 
but a devastated leaf does not make for yield loss. We're talking whole plant defoliation. So when we look at a plant like this, I look at it and I look at whole plant defoliation, every leaf, certainly a leaf like this is above 20%. The, this, this set of three leaflets is bad, but then other leaves are not as badly hammered. I'd say that on this plant, we're likely at more like maybe 15%, if I'm being generous on that particular plant. Um, so when we survey, we have to go through, we have to look at the plants, we have to pull some out and get a sense of whole plant defoliation. Now the thing about it too is, we have to track this as we go. Uh, when we get the start of defoliation, we have to see where the story goes. Because it usually, I get calls when the defoliation levels are actually quite low. You would think that it would be just horrible and that's when I get a phone call. But usually I get a phone call when there's a bit of feeding on the top and because it looks bad at first glance, the phone starts to ring. And that's cool, people are scouting, that's important. But we have to go in and assess that whole plant defoliation. And we have to go back and revisit the field and see where it goes. In the case of something like green clover worm, uh, populations of worms can build, feeding can build, but they also have a lot of predators. And often a big worm population is followed by a big crash in the worm population. And I've had clients this year who have tracked their feeding, they've gotten up to about 15%, and then everything's just stopped. Plus we have two generations of, of the larva in, our, in this part of the world. And so right now we're probably seeing the end, tail end of first, first uh, larval uh, damage. And then we'll have a second larva come out, a second larval stage go through, and we'll see damage later in August. Uh, so there are also population dynamics that are changing. It's important to come back and monitor what's going on over time to see if your damage is increasing, if you're getting to that threshold level, and if you think you're going to exceed it. Uh, one stop sort of shopping to decide whether you spray or not is not adequate to assess this problem. Mm -hmm.